Welcome to the Snakes and Ladders podcast in association with Hunting for Profit, in play horse racing trading education courses, and online academy. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Matt Gibson and I will be running you through the racing diary this week. Now the last podcast, podcast 5, I had it split into two sections where I went through mindset bits and I explained what my plans are going forward. This week I'm just doing purely a racing diary podcast so it'll be a shorter podcast this week and I'm going to go through a bit of a debrief on last week's podcast and then I'll be talking through the the next few days ahead, some pointers to watch out for. So we had a good weekend last weekend, and, and, and it's been good early week as well. There's been plenty of trading opportunities to go at. Liquidity's been good in the markets, and uh, yeah, it's been pretty fruitful, to be fair. It's been, a, the, the national hunt season is really kicking in now. It's been, it's been, been a cracking sort of week, really compared to how I explained the previous week had been a bit up and down due to the weather and some races being called off and it's been a before this week you know we had a we've had the switch from flat to jumps as well so that's kind of pittering out now so it's mainly we're looking at jump racing and all weather racing really so last weekend was good I've done the on the podcast, I mentioned several different runners and riders that went well. Certainly, there was several to to look out for over the weekend. We had uh, I mentioned the twelve o'clock at Air. I was, I was looking out for a few riders, a uh, few runners in that race, a couple of runners in particular in Indivar Blue, who was off the pace, had too much to do going into the home straight. Really, Florida Dreams went okay. Not an amazing run, but okay. And there was Ballyfort and I Love My Bay, who's certainly worth looking out for from that same race, who, who also finished in behind the uh, the winner who made all front running in Primoz. It was a, set the pace well. It, it was still a competitive race, even though the horse made all. So I, I, it was a strongly run race, and I think... Some form could well come out of that race for sure. Um, so certainly worth following them them runners up. I mentioned Little Miss Dante in last week's podcast. She's one to watch for. She went really well. She um, she's certainly one to, to to follow up. She may she may well go to graded company now. So she'll be in really competitive racing. But also worth following up is the three that finished in behind which I've noted, if you go to huntingforprofit.co.uk, click on Racing Diary at the top of the page, you'll be able to see it for, I posted it on the 7th of November, and you'll be able to see the debrief from the recent racing, and potentially some of these to uh, look look for on, on future races. Failing that, if you go to at Hunt for Profit, on Twitter, you'll be able to find a tweet, recent tweet that's got the link to it. So moving on, Sherry Diang that I mentioned on the racing diary on the website. She won well in the end at Weatherby. She won going away, and I mentioned that she could be a progressive mare, a bit like Little Miss Dante. Uh, she she may well push on and get and move on to better better company races. The race had uh, Wild Side of Life from Brook Bay battling in behind for the runner-up position. They may well be worth following up. I mentioned Sosiko and passing well in a novice chase on the podcast last week. Ones to watch out for. Sosiko won the race and passing well finished runner-up position. So that was nice that that, that kind of worked out in, in that way. Now, I think... 
if if the handicap is not too unkind on them, particularly the winner, well, both of them, it, I think that they could well be worth following up, even under penalties. So I'll be looking out for them next time out. Victoriano won at Ascot, but he, he did have some closing him down in, in the latter stages. He had unanswered prayers and yeah, man, who both fell at the last. They were closing him down. I'm not sure if they would have caught him. Possibly, possibly not. But they're certainly worth following up next time out, them two. Hopefully the handicapper isn't too harsh on them. Um, so, they're, yeah, they're worth... Yeah, man, and unanswered prayers worth worth following up. El Dorado Allen stayed on for third in that race. He did jump left at times. He set the pace in front. So I think if you if he switches back to a left-handed track, he'll probably he could well go better in the right race. Of course, two for gold, finished runner-up in that race. Moving on, we had Email Andy pulled clear to win well at Plumpton on Monday, with Goodwin as runner-up, and Aveda Ked. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at pronouncing horse names, which isn't good when I'm talking about horses on a podcast. Aveda Kedavara. I think it, that's how you pronounce it. Aveda Kedavara. Look on the website. It's on there. Okay. He was travelling really well, and he made a mistake nodding on landing four hurdles out. He was travelling well at the time, and or she. I'm not sure if that's a female, so um, don't quote me there. But um, yeah, travelling really well, nodding on landing, four hurdles out. Soon after, and he or she nodded on landing, the gears were turned up in the race. Uh, it's, I put he on the website, so it must be he. He lost ground to rivals and finished third in the end. So I think it's worth, he's worth following up, as is the winner and the runner-up in the right race moving forward. You've got Fratas made all at Fairy House at the weekend on Hurdle's debut. There was a close runner-up in Eagle Fang. Now, Eagle Fang was runner-up in a previous race. And the fourth in that previous race... Oh, I've put here. The fourth has since won from that previous race, sorry, to, to boost the form. And the third, Union Flag when I posted this up, had not run since. Now, Union Flag then ran on the 8th of November, which was yesterday, and won. So they boosted the form there. So if you'd have followed the racing diary on the website, you would have, you could have followed that up, Union Flag there, which we had on our notes, on our watch list in the academy, and went on to win yesterday to boost that form. So it's certainly worth following up Eagle Fang again, in future races and certainly if we're following up Fratas as well who made all personal ambition was a good winner at Warwick okay at the weekend on Hurdle's debut now he finished third in a point to point on his only other run and the runner up from that point to point is yet to run under rules um, and that runner up is called Fortified Fortune who's now with Christian Williams. Now, he has an entry on the 12th of this month at Foslas. Um, the favourite from that race, it was Jinko Blue, who pulled away from the rest, finishing runner-up. So it's another one to follow up. Um, from the rest at the weekend, I mentioned the Mare's Hurdle race that could have well be competitive. You wear it well, went well from the front. You had Lu Lucia and Katrina at St. Stainsbury Girl, I mentioned. There was a lot of pace in the race, but you wear it well, dictated in front. Now, Katrina is what, just one to mention, reference the ground with Katrina. Uh, her, her trainer, Dan Skelton, has since come out and said that she didn't like the heavy ground. If you watch it back, she clips the top of the hurdles bit when when she's going over she's she's finding it a struggle to get out of the deep ground basically he said that they won't be sending her in over in 
deeper ground anymore so they'll be looking for better ground for her and he believes that the handicapper may well drop her her mark so they may well they could go down the handicap route or they could go down the graded route in future with her so in better ground she may be worth um, following up also to mention Dashiell Drasher I mentioned on the podcast last week week uh, for last weekend I mentioned that he he likes the deep ground himself he he likes to bowl along in front which he did and he traded odds on so that works out okay in in them races can often be tight and competitive but he bowled along in front and the he cra- the odds crashed into odds on so that was good good for him so that's uh, pretty much the roundup from last weekend there's there's I could go on all day but I haven't got all day for that and and I don't want to send you to sleep just gives you a bit of a roundup of what went on it's been a like I say it's been a it's been a good week really this last week for trading lots plenty of opportunities to go out liquidity has been good there's plenty of jump racing kicked in now so it's certainly moving on into into you know the the meat of the jump racing season really kicking in now so it's a great great time to trade this really it's a good time to learn as well if, if any of you want to learn to trade correctly in play racing but uh, we will move on now to the next few days and i'll go through a few runners and riders and potential horses to follow as, as the next few days they're up they race away then okay so tomorrow um, at exeter it's the holden gold cup day now there is a novice chase at 14.55 you've got bally desmond who's carrying a penalty one last time out in May, prominently ridden in Ireland, uh, down Royal, um, making debut for New Yard for Jamie Snowden tomorrow. So he's carrying a penalty. But the one I'm quite looking forward to seeing him run is Stay Away Fay, who is making Chase debut along with uh, Grey Dawning. Hurricane and Hurricane uh, Highway and uh, Changing Man. So that so the other four are making Chase debuts. As I said, Bally Desmond won Chase debut last time out. So they're all unexposed over fences. They've all got ratings apart from Bally Desmond. Now the ratings they're going into chasing, so they've got to be out of jump. Okay, they've got to be out of jump the big fences. Moving on from hurdling, stay away. Stay away, Fay is rated one four seven. A prominent runner, is won a graded novice hurdle at, at Cheltenham, and also won a novice hurdle at Newbury. Finished fourth from fifteen in a Grade One uh, in April when last seen. Should handle the ground, and has won well, fresh as well. So goes well fresh. Stay away, Fay. Looking forward to seeing Stay away, Fay running. Uh, jumping over fences for the first time. Grey Dawning was a faller in the race that Stay Away Fay last finished fourth in. Held up in midfield, fell at the ninth hurdle. So that was when last seen was a faller. But before that was progressive. Won a Grey Two novice hurdle and a couple of other. Uh, won a, a handicap actually before that and then a novice hurdle before that. And he's also a bumper winner, so wouldn't discount Grey Dawning whatsoever. Uh, will probably be held up in the early part. Uh, rated one one four one, so we've got six six pounds off, uh, uh, six pounds less than Stay Away Fay. Hurricane Highways rated one two five. One one from three novice hurdles. That was in soft ground. That was over two mile four, so he's got to prove the trip. Stay away, Fay handles the trip okay. The the grey the grey uh, dawning needs to prove the stamina stamina as well. One over two mile five furlongs over hurdles, so still got to prove the stamina over this three mile trip. And the changing man's rated one three two. Um, one 
three from 12 over hurdles. Should, should handle the trip, but got a little bit to make up on ratings, as has Hurricane Highway. But yeah, I, I would have thought stay away, Faye. First time up. Could go well there. The yard's not in fabulous form. The yard, it's a big yard, Paul Nichols' yard. You know, one of the biggest in the country. They had a winner yesterday. They had a winner today. Um, they had a winner yesterday in a maiden hurdle. But for for the uh, and they they had a one one win yesterday and one win on the sixth. Quite quiet in terms of winners, and they've had several placed efforts. You know, they've had a, a few few runner ups places, but it's a, for a big yard. It's a little bit quiet for my liking. That's just something to bear in mind. But that doesn't mean that that horse won't win. But yeah, certainly, certainly want to keep an eye on. But like I say, the yard's a little bit. I'm not going to knock them. A little bit quiet for for such a big yard at, at the minute. Moving on to the fifteen thirty at Exeter tomorrow. It's a Grade Two limited handicap chase. The Howden Gold Cup. You've got at the top of the weights editor Dujit, who's carrying at least more than a stone than everybody else basically now he may well bowl along in front he's a front runner he he might get a bit of company from Alexia Dunuts who who also could could go forward and, and possibly solo so uh, the, the, several of them might might try and go forward but I would imagine editor Juji will will do the front running however he's carrying more than a stone than the rest it's off a big weight He's the best horse in the race off, off ratings for sure. Um, ran ran well, really well uh, last season in, in graded company. Um, one two, one last December and January. Now he did run in October on reappearance. Finished third from seven in a handicap chase, and, and I'm assuming that that's the. That's the way, the route they're going this season with him again. So this may be kind of tune-up race for him to then go back into graded company here. So, yeah, he may well try and dictate in front, but it, it may well be that he's not 100% yet and um, it, it might just be that type of tune-up race for him to, to move back into graded company. That said, he, he really is the best horse in the race and if he handles the weight, he still might well go well in in front, so. But I I would be wary of that that it could turn out competitive race with, with several going might be going well in in behind. <sighs> Who could be going well in behind? Well, Solo's only won over two mile four over fences. Has won over two miles over over hurdles. Good good novice hurdler, but um, probably more of a two two mile four horse. You've got. Warlords won over over the two miles, that returning from a wind up off bottom weight. Alexia de Nuts, no, not really, a, not more of a two mile four horse. You've got Indiana Jones is uh, the Irish Raider, all runs in Ireland so far. Won um, two wins from thirteen, hardly prolific horse. Has won in some graded com uh, has run in graded company. Won a novice uh, last time actually. He, the last time he, he won a race was in March in the Grade Three novice chase. Um. So yeah, certainly one to watch. Uh, Indiana Jones might be one to watch for, uh, given more of a patient ride. Brave Siakas. Siaska, sorry, Brave Siaska. Now, this horse was pulled up in the last two runs in January and March. However, the horse does go well fresh, has gone f well fresh in the past, will like the soft ground. Tra trainer is is well-known, Venetia Williams, for soft soft and heavy ground horses. Um, yeah, if the horse... If the horse is ready for this race, it might be worth watching for, possibly another one that will be held up but however the horse has one front running before so it, another one that could try and dictate in front but I would imagine Etida Dujit will 
we'll do the early front running and then it, it it's a case of what is what is going to challenge at some point i would imagine um I'm not sitting on the fence here, but because it is potentially a competitive affair. So, yeah, I wouldn't discount anyone, but over the trip and the weight and the ground and everything, solo, you wouldn't discount him. But again, the yard's a bit quiet at the minute. You For a big yard, I mean, they still, they still have winners, but for a big yard, a little bit quiet too quiet for me but again I wouldn't discount him it could still could go well promptly ridden as I said brave brave Sieska uh, suit, suit should suit the minimum trip and the ground coming off the pace probably I would imagine but I probably won't be far off the pace because like I say he's, he's one front run as well I wouldn't discount the Irish Raider and Indiana Jones so it could well be a competitive affair but again I, I'd expect the top top rated and carrying lumps of weight editor Jiji to to bowl along in front. It's just whether he handles that weight or not, and and it could well just be that a tune up race ready for get, like I say going back into graded graded company. So we shall see. Like I say, Brave Siaskas get come and uh, Warlord. They're both returning from a wind up, so um, certainly looking forward to that race. Uh, but it, like I say, it could well turn out to be a quite a competitive one. Uh, Saturday, so on Saturday, wait, let me just be aware, 13, 1300 we're going to go to Aintree, so this is a novices limited handicap chase, Gio Vinso, he unseated rider on chase debut last time out, he travelled in mid-div uh, on the inside and he blundered and unseated the rider free out when he went upsides and he had every chance so certainly certainly one to watch out for tomorrow uh, uh, sorry saturday i haven't i haven't seen the, the, the betting or anything yet he is a point to point winner and he won all three over hurdles so yeah he's 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 uh, potentially the progressive type if he takes the chase and he, he was going well till it till he unseated uh, but I've, we've got others in the race that are not fully exposed so it's still worth keeping an eye on them the other one that hasn't won is lord of kerrick is not from free over fences but uh the, the rest of them geo Vin, vinso i Giovinco, I think that's how you pronounce it. Giovinco, he's he's ahead of the other the other four on ratings. So the other the other four are rated one two seven or one two four, and and they they're rated one two four to get into the race. So they are actually officially rated. Tiger Orchards are rated one two seven. The other three are currently officially officially rated uh, a bit lower so to get into the race that they, they've had to they're having to run off a mark of one two four of ten stone five so yeah although Giovinco's going off top weight i'd expect him to go well in this race and i, I would imagine him going off odds on now i know it's not particularly a, a tip for a trade or anything like that but it, it it's um he's just interesting one to watch for because he's fully unexposed and it was his first time up last time. He ran well, so it's just one that I want to watch for moving forwards, really. And, and uh, hopefully he'll progress and move on to better things. Moving on, thirteen ten on Saturday. Bear with me. I'll get it up on my screen. Bear with me. I'm just going to get up my tracker notes. I've got like nearly twenty-seven thousand tracker notes on different horses. I make notes all the time. I need to delete some to be fair. Because there's a lot there. Um, right, I've got Saturdays up for 1310. I mentioned it down Royal. Yeah, there's just, there's just one that I'm interested in, in looking out for uh, just to see how he goes over hurdles. Um, he's going in a maiden hurdle. 
for the first first time over hurdles on Saturday. It's a point to point and bumper winner down memory lane. Just one that I'm looking forward to seeing how he jumps and how he goes. There's not a lot of, to go off really in that race. It's, it is a very unexposed, likely race field. You've got Agent Tequila, who is a point to point winner, also making hurdles debut. But yeah. Down memory lane is just one that I'm looking forward to seeing over hurdles for the first time. So that was the 1310. I say he's a point to point and bumper winner, him. 1350 on Saturday. Bear with me. Yeah, 13, 1350 is another novice chase. You've got. Captain Combi, who's won, we won on them. Um, who won on um, uh, beginners chase in Ireland? Sorry, in August that was in yielding to soft ground. That was over two mile one. Since one in uh, since running a grade three, uh, lost to Shaza, which is no no can't knock him for that in a grade 3 novice race finish runner up from 5 Captain Combi rated around the 130 well rated up to when off what rated about one late 130s early 140s over hurdles so one to watch for possibly but then Napa's Hill should really be the standout one in that race going off ratings finished second on chase debut last time out at Chepstow last month in soft ground over pretty much a similar trip to this in a forerunner race it was held up in rear and pushed along and outpaced five out may well come this is from Paul Nichols yard that I've already mentioned it yeah, could come on for that run though, to be fair. Rated one five three from from hurdles ratings, so really should be the standout horse in this race, purely purely on, on hurdle on hurdles form. But then you've got Doyen Star making chase debut. Givga is making chase debut, and then you've got Lady Adair who's off bottom weight. She's She's much lower rated, but she 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 won on Chase debut last time out. Uh, prominently ridden, but again, uh, this is a better class of race. So yeah, you, you, I'd expect Nappers Hill to be the one that the benchmark here, but none of them are exposed at all. So uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, Opening bids exposed one five from twelve, but but the rest aren't exposed over fences. So you know, now I've said that that the exposed one are going to win, but no, uh, none of them are exposed at all apart from opening bids. So, but I'd expect Nappers Hill to be the benchmark in the race, but we'll see how they go. It, it like I say didn't didn't win last time out, but could well come on for the run. We'll see. In, in that particular race, that's the 13.50, that's at Wing Canton on Saturday. Okay, just a horse that I'm looking forward to seeing run, uh, the 14.15. The Legislator, okay, it's a soft and heavy ground, point to pointer, point to point and dual hurdle winner, okay. So, one, two point to points, one twice over, sorry, one point, one a point to point and one twice over hurdles. One in soft and like soft and heavy ground. There's one over what two mile seven two no two mile six and a bit. Made made all front running. And uh, there's one track uh, prominently ridden in a free runner race on hurdles debut. Then 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 one uh, under a penalty on uh, making all front running at Kelso in in heavy ground. So. Likes heavy, soft ground, should handle the trip, no problem. And uh, 
might well bowl along in front or certainly will be prominently ridden. One one I'm looking forward to watching over fences. As one fresh, so that's not really an issue. Uh, yeah, certainly one to watch for. Just looking at the card briefly, possibly no regrets. Might try and take him on early on, but that horse is exposed really. It's one, two from nine. But then there are others that are unexposed in the race. Had to be Hugo is making chase debut as well. Gentleman de Maze, naught from three over fences. Uh, Warrior story, the same, naught from three. And then you've got Prince de Fuchs, I think you how you pronounce him. He's won once over fences. He won last time out in April. Um, promptly ridden. Uh, that was in better ground though, that was in good good to soft ground, but just to note the horse that came runner up to him last time out in April actually has actually gone on to win today in Robin's zone, so that form's been that form has been boosted today uh, from uh, Prince de, de Fuchs's uh I think that's how you pronounce it his uh, last win which was getting off the mark on the second go over fences. On Saturday, he makes debut for New Yard, moved, moved yards from Sam Thomas. So, but yeah, the, the, the legislator is, is one that I'm definitely looking forward to. But that that bit of form, you never know. Worth worth keep keeping an eye on that race. Um, and the final race I want to talk about on Saturday really is the fourteen twenty, and the fourteen twenty. You've got Jerry Cologne, who's making first chase start with the big boys, basically. He's very progressive, won, won a point-to-point, -point, a dual bumper winner, won both races over hurdles, then won three novice chases in a row. That was last, well, last season. Um, picked up a grade one... Uh, picked up two grade ones, sorry. One of them was in Sandown. Uh, one at Limerick. And um, went to Cheltenham. Finished runner-up to the real Wacker who who bowled along in front that day and he just couldn't pick up. Just didn't pick up and and didn't quite challenge that day but, but stayed on for the runner-up spot in March. And then he, he won again. Uh, Aintree uh, in April to finish off the season so won every single race apart from one where he finished runner up at Cheltenham um, in the Brown Advisory Novices Chase so really progressive horse no longer a novice running with the big boys tomorrow uh, Saturday so he's the unexposed one progressive he's running against conflated M who's rated 167 you've got Envoy Allen's rated 163 M Minena Ido who's rated 162 Jerry Colombe is a potential Gold Cup horse S certainly one to watch for this season looks 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 like a real stayer and yeah could progress from his mark of 162 but be interesting to see how he goes obviously with winning in every race goes well fresh don't see that being a problem um, the, the the he's quite versatile with ground as well, so he, he's one in good to soft. He's one in uh, good to soft with with good in places, and he's one in soft and heavy ground. So just a really good horse. So looking forward to seeing how he gets on against the big boys in the big race at Dam Royal in in the fourteen twenty. That's pretty much it. That, that I really want to mention. I could go on about lots more races, but. I want to keep this sort of to around half an hour if possible and uh, like I say I've mentioned some form lines to, to keep an eye on from the racing diary moving forwards I'll I'll look at picking some more out over the weekend I pick them out anyway myself which is what I use to form my notes for for our trading group and um, just to finish off reference our trading group it is th these this information on horses and races and form and stuff it is purely information 
as I've mentioned in previous podcasts, that what we look for certain significant entry points, which is what I teach on the course and in the academy to to enter in certain races. Um, so it, it, it's not a give me. This is this isn't a spoon feeding exercise where I tell people to back certain horses or lay certain horses. It's not like that. The course is there to teach you to fish, basically. Um, so that is basically this race information helps in certain aspects of what we're looking for. It may to some people it may some of the information might go over your heads. That's fine. I understand that. You don't need to have loads and loads of race knowledge to profit from in play racing. It just helps in certain scenarios. So yeah, that's why I'm sort of bringing this racing information to you, so so you can learn from it and learn more about racing and more more about the subject, more about the sport. And as the more you know about the sport you're trading, if you use that information correctly, then then it 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 should help you more. But if you use it incorrectly, obviously it's going to hinder you. So it's doing your due diligence and understanding what races you're looking at and 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 where the bits of the jigsaw fit together but i've talked a lot now anyway i want to wrap it up there if you have any questions for me about in play trading or you want to have a discussion with me just just drop an email via the website and i'm happy to have a chat via skype or zoom and that's it Uh, enjoy the next few days racing and over the weekend and hopefully there's plenty more trading opportunities to go at hopefully it's as fruitful as it has been the last week and uh, yeah enjoy thanks for listening so i hope you enjoyed that podcast if you want to know more about learning how to trade horse racing in play then you can find us on twitter and youtube and you can contact us via the website at www.huntingforprofit.co.uk Okay.